Hi guys, it's Erin. Welcome back to Lady Poe Designs. We've got some bunny spindle boxes that I'm gonna show you today. I made three. One of them is just regular, just stained wood. And then two of them are a little bit more fancy. So let's hop right in. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? So scrap wood, you know I got a lot of it. We're gonna dive on into it. So starting out, we're gonna use some scrap wood. These are all from either Lowe's scrap wood pile or pallet boards. This is the big bunny box. So this is the bunny bum, it's nine and a half inches. I've traced out the bunny ears and the head. That is a total of 15 inches. And then each side, um, I believe the boards are 20 inches. Um, Julie from Julie Signs and Designs did these a while back. Um, and I just kind of made them my own. So I give credit to her. She, these are so cute. Now the little box, I just did three sides, very simple U-shaped box. Um, and the sides are, um, well, the ends rather are just two, I call them like a pieces. <laughs> um, but the sides are 11 and then the three U shape that make the box itself are 15. And then both spindles are from cribs that I have. One is a Jenny Lind, I think that it's called. And then one is just a really old crib that I got off of Facebook market. So I took these outside and cut them out with my jigsaw and sanded them down. Um, so the first one, super, super simple first one, because I wanted it to be more so just a sample, if you will. Um, I'm just going to go in with dark and decrepit and just stain it. And that's all I'm going to do to it. And I'm going to use a mop from Dollar Tree for the tail. And I nailed it together and put the spindle for the handle. Literally, that's it. It was so easy. It is just cutting it out, sanding, and nailing it together. It was so, so easy. The other two are a little bit more intricate because I do some decorating on them. So I'm going to start out with the smaller of the two. Um, the side pieces, like I said, are 11 inches and the U shape of the box are all 15 inch boards. I've sanded them all. I'm going to stain them all with DIY dark and decrepit. And since these are pallet wood boards, they are a little dry and I didn't want it super dark. So I am spraying the wood that not only opens up the wood to accept the stain, but it doesn't let as much of the stain soak in, if that makes sense. So I'm spraying the wood as I'm painting the dark and decrepit on and I'm using a baby wipe to take it off. So I take off a little bit more so it doesn't make it as dark. But look at that wood grain, isn't it pretty? So I've stained all of the boards and <laughs> you're gonna think I'm crazy. But on the U-shape, the actual box part, we're going to go in with black velvet. Stick with me. I know you're going to say, well, why'd you stain it? Well, I wanted a darker box because of the transfer I'm using, but I'm only doing one coat and I'm wiping a lot of it back, but I didn't want to stain it with the black because I wanted it darker than a stain. And I wanted to be able to wipe some of it back just by painting it. So I wanted some of the wood grain to show, but I didn't want it as light as just a black stain. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but you'll see on one of the boards, since I only did one coat, when I'm wiping it back, you can really see that dark stain from the dark and decrepit come through. Had I not stained it that dark wood, it would have been that real light, bright wood. 
And I didn't want that. I wanted the darkness. So I'm putting it together to see which way I want the boards to face. So I know like which way I want my transfers to go. Okay. So I've picked out my boards. These are going to be my front and my back or back and front, whatever, however you want to face it. And we're going to use the Brocant transfer. I love this transfer book. And we're going to get the little birdies on the wall. Or is that a branch? Yeah. Branch fence. And then we're going to use this white rose and a couple of the butterflies and this bee. Um, I think I do use one flower from the Millet's transfer book. I don't know. It was a scrap. So forgive me. I don't know where the little purple flower comes from that I use. But, <clears throat> excuse me. Just like all of the transfers, they have a little bit of attack. So we're going to lay it down and use the transfer stick that... All of the IOD transfers come with, and I'm just going to do one real good rub across it. And then I'm going to go across the bottom and I'm going to cut off the excess. So it's going to let it, it's going to make it easier for me to wrap their tails around the bottom of the board because I don't want to cut their tails off. So I'm going to cut slits wherever their tails are. That's just going to make it easier as I'm working down this whole transfer so it doesn't crack, so I don't break it. So you'll see as I'm working down, I'm, I'm able to bend down each little tab, if you will. See, I'm able to bend that down, wrap it around the board, rub it off. And then it just pops up and you rub off that bird. <laughs> and if it doesn't rub off, put it back down, rub some more, just work with it. it these are so cool to work with. You keep going, get to a tail and bend down the little flap. and rub down the little tail and just I just wrap the tail all the way around the board so I continue to do that all the way down and then when you're done you burnish it with the back of the transfer or the carrier sheet to make sure it's all stuck down um, I already put the rose down, but we're going to put a butterfly down beside the rose. Same thing. We're going to rub it down, lift as we go, burnish it. And then a couple of the buds, see that's where I cut out the rose. I was going to put a couple of buds on the other side. So I'm trying to get the most of the transfer that I'm cutting up. I am known for cutting up transfers. I don't know why. But we're going to put that down, burnish it. I put the leaves down right beside it. Got one of the little butterflies, put it down next to the little birdies. Now on the end, you'll see, I think, see this little flower right here. I think that's, I don't know what book that's from. I'm sorry. But we're going to put a butterfly above that. And then put our little bee friend on the other side. And then the rest of the leaves from that rose up at the top. And I'm going to wrap those around either side of that board. So to make sure the transfers stay on and to seal the wood, we're going to go in with DIY's liquid patina and do a coat over the entire box, the sides, all three black pieces, the bottom. I don't put any transfers on. I just leave that black. Now this is the spindle. It's from a very, very, very old crib. 
so it's very dry. I am going to stain it with the dark and decrepit. So I do the same method. I spray it and then paint the dark and decrepit on and wipe it off. But when that's done, I'm going to go in with Fusion's beeswax because I want to put some conditioning back into this wood. And you can see the difference when I put that on as opposed to the dry wood. And after that's on, it's so soft. Oh, I loved it. But I put a bead of wood glue down each side of the board and we're going to brad nail these on. I'm going to flip this over. I've already put a bead of wood glue down. This was so hard to film because I do not have the space to do it. I need to get a bigger workspace. I'm sorry, guys. But we're brad nailing that in. I'm going to mark... Or actually, no, I'm going to put the sides in first. But we put wood glue down. And this is more or less just to stabilize it. So when I do brad nail it, this thing is solid. I'm telling, I'm telling you solid. <laughs> going to brad nail the sides of it. And then I do the same thing to the other side. Now we're going to take the spindle outside and cut it on my saw, but I marked it with a pencil to see how wide I needed it. So I cut off both ends so it would look even, you know, I didn't want it to look all wonky. So it's going to look like this. When it's done, big chunky handle. I love it. So I'm going to put, again, wood glue on both sides. And you'll see my lovely husband, my lovely assistant, <laughs> comes over and holds it together for me while I brad nail the spindle on. He was reaching over me and I'm like climbing under his arms. It was funny. But here it is. I really love how this turned out. I specifically chose these boards because of the imperfection on the board that has the rose on the side of it. And the crib spindle, ugh, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. Okay, so the other big bunny box, we're going to go in with beadboard. And I did go ahead and stain this one as well because I'm going to do a kind of layered effect. But we're going to do um, a layer of beadboard over the entire thing, the sides, the bunny ears, the bum, everything. Now right here I'm showing you there was something in this wood. I don't know what kind of tannins or anything were in this wood. This was just coal lumber from, from Lowe's. Um, I know the managers there. I used to work there. So they just give it to me. I don't know what was on this wood, but it was coming through the paint. So I'm taking the white salvation solution and I'm just painting it on that part where it was coming through. And just painting over that. And it stopped it. It never came back through. So we're going to take mint chip and the rose chintz paint inlay. Y'all, I have been saving this paint inlay because I think it is absolutely stunning. It is one of my favorite paint inlays. Oh my gosh. It looks great on any color. It looks great on any surface. You absolutely cannot go wrong with this paint inlay. So right now the whole box is white, right? But we're going to lay it down in mint green. And then we're going to sand that back to show all the layers. So when we sand it, we're going to see the white 
the stained wood, even some of the raw wood. So I want all of those layers to show, right? So we're going to get, remember you have a paint side and you have a grid side to your paint and light. We're going to spray our paint side after we get it all cut and fit. That's what I was doing while I was talking. <laughs> Set that aside, that lets the, the paint kind of moisten and lets the paper wake in or, you know, open up in a way. You get less wrinkles that way, it releases better. I just, I've had really good success doing it this way. So I'm gonna do it in pieces since this part, my actual paint inlay is in pieces. So I'm gonna paint the ear with, this is mint chip. I'm going to lay it down. Didn't want it that way. I'm going to flip it around. And I'm trying to get these in as fast as I can. So I'm just pressing it in with my finger and going on to the next section. So I'm going to put a healthy coat of paint. I'm not globbing the paint on. I'm putting a healthy coat, but it's not horribly thick and laying down the paint inlay. And I'm just pressing it out to where I don't feel any lumps, any bubbles, anything with my fingertips. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other ear and get the rest of this transfer on so it can start drying all at the same rate. So I'll get that layer on. Yep. Okay. There we go. And I'm just going to lay this down. And there was a little spot on the left part where I didn't like that it was that bare. So I had one of the little scrap pieces that I had cut off. So I'm just going to lay that down to where it just has a little peak of a rose right there. So we're going to spray this down. Now, usually y'all have seen me lay these down into a bonder. This is completely different. This is going into paint. So I am going to spray the back and press it into that paint to make sure that it is fully going into that layer of paint. So now we're going to do the bunny bum. Um, we're going to spray the back of it, paint our surface, get a good layer, make sure it's smooth, and then just lay it gently down and make sure there's no bubbles, spray it and dab all the excess water off and I'm pressing that into that paint. These are the sides and this is more like a, a wallpaper print. So you can match these up. So when I cut it, I was able to match these up. So you can't even tell where this is split. So we're going to spray the paint side and do these for both sides of the bunny as well. I don't think I show you the whole process. I just think I show you like, the very beginning and the end, so you don't have to sit through it again. <laughs> We're gonna lay that down. And the same thing. I'm very careful to line up because I know it would bother me if it didn't line up. So I probably spent way too much time trying to make sure that it lined up, but that's just me. It doesn't have to line up, but I made sure that it did. So I line it up right there and see, it doesn't stick right away. I can pull that up. Yes, there's paint on it, but you can still push it down, but you spray it 
dab the excess water off and we're going to set all of these aside and let them completely dry. And you'll know that they're dry because the paper will turn back um, white in a way you'll the it won't be as noticeable. You won't see the paint inlay more or less. Well, you will, but it won't be as dark. So while it's drying, we're going to go in with the mint chip and we're going to do a lighter coat over all of the pieces. I didn't want to do as heavy as a coat of a coat on the rest of the pieces of wood that I'm laying the paint and laid to. Does that make sense? Because you need a certain amount of paint to put that paint and lay in. And I didn't want to put that much all over the rest of it because I am sanding it back. I did want that distressed look. I did want some of the white to come through. So I didn't want a thick layer. So once everything is dry, so you can tell that's dry and it's completely stuck. So we're going to spray the paint inlays. This is going to allow the paper to release. You see that paint inlay come alive. It's so pretty. I love how this box came out. I am absolutely in love with it. And you can see the difference on the left. It only has to sit for like 30 seconds. And then you can start peeling it off. Ooh, da, 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 da. look at that. I mean, I just, I just, now I can use this two or three more times. So I'm going to set this aside and let it dry. And then I'm going to admire this some more because <laughs> I just think it's so pretty. And I'm going to continue to peel all the rest of them off. So I'm going to peel the ears and I'm setting these aside on the board beside me to let them all completely dry because I am going to use these again. But uh, I just, I absolutely love how these pink delicate roses look on this mint background. I think it's absolutely stunning. And see, that one right there isn't even perfect. You can tell the paint inlay didn't even get on there good enough. But I like that. It looks distressed. It looks old. It looks like it's been there for years. And I love it. This one, too. And I'm okay with it. I love it. You see, that whole rose didn't even take, but... I'm not even flinching. I absolutely love it. So I'm going to finish peeling these off. Oh, that's so cool. I'm telling y'all, if y'all have never used paint and lays, y'all are missing out. Oh, so I'm going to go around all of the corners, all of the sides, all of the edges. And I'm going to sand down to the white, some to the wood, some to the bare wood, um, and just to stress where I want. And then I'm going to, I'm going to seal everything with liquid patina. Now I set these in paint, so you have to be careful not to smear it. So I am going in with a very light hand while I am sealing these with a the liquid patina. But once you get that first coat on there and you get it sealed, you're good. Then you can go back in and seal it again with a heavier coat. If you need more protection, you can seal it again and put a more healthy coat of the liquid patina if you're worried about getting it messed up. So for her little ear, we're going to use some Sola wood flowers. And I'm just going to hot glue these on. Um, this is going to be an indoor uh, decor piece. This was an order from a customer, so she is going to use it indoor. So I'm just going to use hot glue. And put those on her little ear. And then the bum is going to be more solo flowers. And they're more of white, creamy, less wood. But 
I'm just going to keep them bunched up in my hand and put the hot glue on the back. And put them on together and I I nail the spindle on off camera because I couldn't do it on but y'all oh my gosh look at this oh it's so pretty I absolutely this has got to be my favorite one that I've made so far I think I'm probably gonna make it again for myself <laughs> Tell me which one was y'all's favorite. Um, let me know if y'all want to see any more boxes like this. I can probably set up a better way of filming it to show y'all how to make them thoroughly. Um, but y'all know what to do. Sub, like, comment, and remember you're beautiful and you can do hard things. Thanks guys. Bye.